Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Sarah's View of Life. I am Sarah Troy, right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. We are enough. How do we measure what is enough? Who decides what makes us enough? What is enough in our own eyes? It's your truth. It's your authenticity. It's your calling. It comes from the very core of you. I am not perfect by any means in any way. I am flawed in so many ways. But that's what makes me imperfectly perfect for me. You see, our measurement of what is enough, whether we're good enough, beautiful enough, bright enough, rich enough, important enough, is not to be decided by someone else. Is what's important to you what's good enough for you? Are you really nurturing and guiding yourself on your very best path possible? Are you placing enough value upon yourself? Are you willing to take that self-discovery into your beautiful instrument so that you may learn to play it and find your orchestra? You see, the trouble is with you're not enough is that talk is coming from other people, but it could very possibly be reflecting what's on us on the inside. Do we feel not enough? Do we feel that we should be more to please other people? Do we feel there's a higher standard that we have to rise up to to make us important? You know, that elevation of self is something that comes from within you. It is something that you do for you so you can be the best you you can possibly be. It's not for someone else. Now, that isn't to say that we cannot place that value on ourselves outwardly as well as inwardly, presenting ourselves in the light that is reflected from the inside out. It's not the Armani suit. It could be the little cotton dress or a very nice striped shirt. The whole point is, are you comfortable in your own skin? Are you comfortable with being you? When you present yourself to other people, are you looking to become that chameleon of what they want? Or are you, you, who is flexible in your conversation, in your open mind, and in your heart center to communicate with people? We love to judge, persecute, and in so many cases, kill. And not all kills are physical deaths. They're emotional ones. They're ones of friendship at work. When somebody passes that judgment, that, you know, that knife in the back, all of that. And the thing is, it's unnecessary. You see, when you look at the trees outside, and I, outside my window right now, have a bunch of trees around me. I'm going to count how many I can see with the naked eye. I have one right outside my window. I have three on the left-hand corner. I have one, two, three, four, five, six on the right-hand side of me, and there are trees behind that. And each one of these trees is different. They have different branches, different color greenery, stand in a different way, some flex out, some grow tall, but they are all beautiful and they all are purposeful. They're all here for a reason, so many reasons if you understand trees. So why can't we look at each other? Um, you know, you may have a preference. I love a willow tree, a, a firmly planted willow tree that's been there for a long time, that's tall and strong, with its beautiful branches flowing out all the time. I love a willow tree. And for me, that willow tree is very much me. Deep-rooted, strong core, which I had to work on to get that 
and then branches that are flexible to go in any wind and be able to weather it and not be uprooted. But you might be an oak, you might be an apple tree or a pear tree, oranges, who cares? Be the tree that you are. You see, if we stop living by somebody else's expectation, by somebody else defining what's enough. And you know, you can have this. This friend is enough for me in her light. My best friend, I don't think has ever listened to one of my shows, yet she's one of my loudest cheerleaders. What I do isn't necessarily what her mindset is on, but she respects and values me for doing the work that I do because she knows this is Sarah being Sarah. She is a, a very much a pack woman, always stacks of friends, and she's always doing things with multiple people seven days a week. I'm not that person. But when we get together, we have a wonderful time. And we see each other for who we both are and enjoy each other's company. And that's what's important. It's not what is the same. It's what is beautifully different. I mean, you could have a friend who's a neurosurgeon. Are you going to talk the brain in your surgery all the time every time you see them? No. You respect what they do. But where you meet, where your connection is, where your vibe is, is where you will actually find that deeper connection, where you are enough for each other. Because you're not expecting anything more than what you are giving. The expectation of, you know, like this particular friend, Jan, when I broke my ankle, she was there wheeling me to the hospital and helping me out. When my house burnt down, she was there helping me go through the ashes, trying to find whatever was left. With um, my youngest daughter, she was there. My son, she's always been there. She is an incredible person. She even took me away on a holiday after my mum died. Uh, for my 60th birthday. And, you know, that is a true friend. <laughs> what truer can you get? But we are both opposites in many ways, but we found the equilibrium of what we are and our opposites of what so intrigues us about each other. And we're both enough for each other. You see, if you think that you've got to fill the whole criteria, that you've got to be everything for that one person, I promise you, you will fail. You may not be the best cook, the best housekeeper, the best at the job, you know, the best this, the best that. You do your best. You do your best in your own consciousness. You understand what that is. And you bring it honestly, authentically to the table. Your spouse, your lover, your bestie may not be able to do everything that meets your needs. And that's why we have many friends. Now, I'm not saying have many spouses, but don't expect your spouse to complete you, to fulfill you, to be everything to you, because that's not going to work. So be enough. Decide for yourself what is enough. Decide for yourself how you want to be. And that measurement of enough is where you feel comfortable with self. I know I'm an older woman now. Things are sagging. Bodies stiffening up. You know that whole thing that comes with age. And would I love to be back in my 20-year-old body? Yes. Wouldn't I? Wouldn't anybody? Not just the body shape, which I d took for granted at the time, but the health, the energy. That would be fantastic. But... Even then, I was looking at what wisdom would I have acquired along the way when I reached 60? I was always fascinated with older people and the journeys that they've taken. You know, I remember meeting one woman who was in her 60s and being fascinated with her. I was early 20s, being fascinated with her because she had lived in so many countries. And I thought that was absolutely awesome. And I wanted to have that experience myself. And guess what I did? I've lived in 
five countries, four countries, England, South Africa, US and Canada. And every single one of those journeys that I took were certainly wonderful. They taught me a great deal. And they became a part of me, and, you know, part of extending of me. The, the exploration of me kind of helped me develop more of me. And that's the thing is, if you feel in your heart right now, you know what, my life doesn't feel enough. I don't feel enough. I don't feel that life is connecting for me. Then it's not enough. So you be the one to seek out what you're missing. Don't dictate. Don't put something in, I, well, if I have this, I'll be fine. If I have that, I'll be fine. No. Simply be willing to explore. Explore. Fill your backpack with all the knowledge you know. The fortification to help you on your journey and be willing to take one step in front of the other and allow allow life to happen to you and respond to life learn from life become that life and you can't do it by manual you can't do it by i must be here by this certain time no you've got to be willing to go with the flow and every time you get a, a misdirection the wind's blowing you in a different way and you look at it and, well this is a dead end street what am i doing here it is what did you learn along the way and later on, when you come across that sign again, will you go down it? Or have you learned that it's a false lead? Nothing is a waste of time, although it feels like it sometimes. It's all a lesson of life. It's all something that we pick up and put in our backpack of life and travel with us. It's our instrument of knowledge. And the thing is, as we gather the knowledge, we've got to understand it's knowledge. It's data. It's accumulative. How does it make you feel? Has it switched on your heart? Are you opening up your soul? Is your spirit ignited? When you can feel all of those things, like your chakra has got you sitting straight, when you can feel the core of you and you know your core truth and you know you can do nothing against that core truth, however enticing it sounds, when you know all of those things, then you can say, I'm enough. Because I'm going to take who I am with what I know and continue to walk forward in this wonderful life and explore myself even further, not for anyone else, but for me. So take it from me. It took me a long time to become enough in my own life. Why? Because I was always measuring myself by what somebody else wanted me to be. I was always feeling I was letting them down by trying to be what they wanted me to be, and I couldn't be that because that wasn't me. Always trying to be enough in somebody's eyes. Can do this enough, can do that enough, I'm enough of this. And the, one of the hard lessons I've had to learn is, I'm not meant to be the star up in the sky. I came from the stars in the sky. I'm meant to be the light down here on earth. And it's okay that I don't have a great big, huge media ship and, and that it's massive, you know, rah, rah, rah behind it. The shows that I bring you and where I do all these wonderful interviews are shows of celebrating the people who have taken those journeys, who have become enough in their own lives. And then that enthusiasm of turning around and helping people on theirs for inspiration, invitation, skills and tools, and the excitement of who they are today and what they're doing. I love where I'm at. I love what I'm doing. Could I do it better? Yes, couldn't we all do things better? That better will come as the more I do it. I put myself out there as I have a saying, saying I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but I'm somebody's strong cup of black coffee. If you can take that black coffee, if you can take my style, the style that we have here in Self Discovery Media, if you want to listen to people who are being vulnerable and sharing that vulnerability and how they found their own strength and courage and how they found their way onto a path that is meaningful, purposeful, servicing others on their journey of life, and they found their core 
It's all about the core. That's when the soul, the heart, and the spirit, and the mind are one. And they speak this one language. When you listen to the core, you understand what it is. So be enough. That's not to say don't stop growing. Don't stop learning. Don't stop reaching. But sometimes just pausing and being where you are at right now, doing what you're doing, is enough. And then an opportunity or something will come along for you to expand or embrace. Then you take it. But don't go chasing because you'll run right by that very thing you're looking for. You are enough. Don't sell yourself short. Don't please allow others to sell you short. Be the enough of who you are. Fuel, water, seed, energy vibration of yourself. Nurture yourself and love yourself as you would someone else. And let yourself open those wings and take flight. Because when you step into that, you become your core, your authenticity, your own beautiful instrument playing, your own beautiful music, then you will understand what enough is. Enough is joy. It's laughter. It's caringness. It's kindness. It's love. It's peace. It's knowing oneself and saying to oneself, you are enough. Take some time for yourself this week. Have a chat with your mirror. Are you being open and honest with yourself? Is this time right now in this whole era of change for you maybe to change some things up in your own life, to look at things in a different way? If it is time for that, then make the time to make it happen. Don't put things off for tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. What you seed and water today is what grows tomorrow. But if you're ever putting things off for tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, nothing is growing. So I wish you all a wonderful week of reflection, of renewal, of embracement, of allowing and understanding that even as you are right now, you're enough. But if you want to be more enough for yourself, be willing to take flight. This is Sarah Troy, selfdiscoverymedia.com. I wish you all a blessed week. Bye-bye for now. We hope you enjoyed the show. We look forward to bringing you more shows. Please go to selfdiscoverymedia.com slash shows and you will see the incredible lineup of genres and shows that we have for you. We are here to make a difference in your life. Thank you for listening.